Well, it's that time of year again, and we are back here in the Kingdom of Kerry for the Rent Kill Initial Killarney Historic Rally. This event attracts a huge amount of quality competitors from right here in Ireland to overseas. The spectators are in for a fantastic weekend of rallying in the Southwest. <laughs> It's the 2018 Rent-A-Kill Initial Killarney Historic Stages Rally, which heralds the start of Christmas in Killarney. And what a lineup we have for this year's eight-stage one-day event, held over some of the most iconic stages that Irish rally cars will ever traverse. If you're looking for history, both in terms of cars and drivers, the stages on this year's event are truly some of the best, not only in Ireland, but worldwide. And so to the ceremonial start in the centre of Killarney, where we meet two men who've represented Ireland on the World Rally stage. Waterford's Craig Breen, the ex-Citroen World Rally Championship driver, and Chris Meek's former co-driver, Paul Nagel. At the behest of the sponsor's rent -a initial, the pair will be one of the double-O cars in their Metro 604. Yeah, obviously I've waited a long, long time to finally get to get behind the wheel. So um, I grew up with this. Uh, I grew up following my dad for years and years on the side of the road. And in the middle of the rain, my mum was making tea and sandwiches and bringing us around to watch. So uh, it's nice nice to finally get behind the wheel on myself. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. Paul, you hadn't far to travel for today anyway. <laughs> no, I'm. it's uh, my local rally. It's uh, My dad did, uh, founded this rally 20 odd years ago. So it's... Uh, you know, it's a rally, there's no pressure, it's just out, go relax. It's completely different from the World Championship. We can go out and just enjoy ourselves and let the hear it on a bit. So as the crowd show their appreciation for the sights and sounds of the Metro and for the very welcome presence of Breen and Nagel, it was time to meet the main field and first through the number one seed in historics, a former winner, Mark Falvey, in the Escort RS 1600. Mark, second overall last year. You're a serious contender here this weekend. Yeah, well, that's thereafter putting us number one in to put the pressure on. So um, I will give it a good shot now and hopefully we'll be here tomorrow evening to talk to you. <laughs> Next up, one of our many Welsh visitors, Melvin Evans, seated number five in Historics in his Mark II Ford Escort. We keep on coming back. It's an event I've never won and we've always been third or second or something like that, but it's getting harder to win every year. I'm getting older and there's younger boys coming in and the cars are getting better, but, uh, but it still is a great event to do. While the crowds were on hand to see the likes of Breen and Nagel and the main field of competitors, there was also a huge welcome for the legendary Jimmy McRae, the five-time British rally champion and two-time Irish champion competing in a Vauxhall Firenze. Rallies in Scotland and England, you know, struggling for entries and having to cancel the events. And you come here, you know, 150 entries and... Uh, look at the turnout tonight, it's fantastic, it's just great, a absolute fantastic. As McRae rolled away in the Forenza, it was time to welcome the two-time modified winner, Kerry's Rob Duggan, who had entered the event in his Ford Escort, Mark II. Rob, you're not long off to play from Australia, are you going for three in a row this year? Yeah, definitely be flat from the word go. It'll be a tough challenge, a lot of tough opposition, but um, yeah, I didn't come back here to come second. And so the ceremonial start was completed, and it was now time to turn the attention to what the maximum entry would face. And to Park Ferme, and the sun had yet to rise as the cars and crews prepared to head to the first stage of the day, Mall's Gap. But while the teams and crews can concentrate fully on the road ahead, out of the stages, it was full-scale preparation for the organisers and the TV crews. 
Scores of volunteers and marshals are needed to run the event every year, and there was no shortage of people willing to get involved to ensure the smooth running of the 2018 rally, even in the inclement conditions that greeted everyone before the start of this year's event. Day is breaking, excitement is building as we are here in the iconic Malls Gap where the cream of the crop will be turning out in force to tackle this challenging stage. It's a little bit misty here but it will not dampen the spirits for this historic rally. And so to the action over stages one, two and three. And the first car we see is the number one seed, Mark Falvey, who won the event five years ago and who was second in 2017. Falvey had the experienced James O'Brien on the notes. Their escort had a slight misfire in the engine on the opening loop and that put them into second place after three stages, 8.7 seconds off the leader. Second through on the gap was the Mark II of Marty McCormick and Barney Mitchell, who encountered problems on stage one, which saw them lying only eighth. The pair went well on stage two, climbing to third, but the Gremlins returned and they retired with mechanical trouble on special stage three. McCormick is a regular on the British rally scene, and indeed here in Ireland, and was disappointed to go out so early in Killarney. The leader after three was the Talbot Sunbeam Lotus of Owen Murphy and Anthony Nestor. And still left of a flat press. 40, six right, 40, real two left. I mean real two left. Tight three right, 40, very bad. Two right, don't cut. Four left opens. 60. The car is somewhat down in power compared to the escorts, but Murphy, who hails from County Cork, was happy with his tyre choice and the car was going well, despite some concerns over a slight brake calibre leak in the sunbeam. And they caught the Eddie McCormack through the gap on stage one. Into two left with the Chevron. And it's long, watch this now, it's long, get he understood it into you. Flat six right, 80. There was a host of visiting Welsh crews in this year's event. One of those was Neil Williams with his County Cork navigator, Anthony O'Sullivan. A steady start for the pair as they climbed to fourth by the end of the opening three stages. 46.4 seconds off Owen Murphy's lead. Melvin Evans was another of the strong Welsh contingent in his Mark II with County Cork's Sean Hayde on the notes. A gear knob came off on one of the morning stages and had a few niggly issues throughout the loop, which meant they were fifth, 2.9 seconds off fourth place. Welshman Tommy Davies didn't have a great season in his Fiesta or five, but he borrowed a mate's Mark I to have a crack in Killarney Historics and was sixth after three stages, 53 seconds off the historic leader Murphy. Ray Hilliard is a Kerryman living in London who returns home to do the rally every year in the Hill Twister Mark I. He and co-driver Connor Walsh were just outside the top ten after three runs. Dennis Cronin and navigator Helen O'Sullivan were lying in tenth in the Mark II. Cronin was a previous winner in Killarney. He's the uncle of four-time British champion Keith Cronin. Welshman Phil Collins, a regular on the Irish historic scene, usually runs in the modified section in the Mark II Escort. But he brought his Opel Ascona over for the first time. A great drive over Malls Gap to lie in third. Long flat crest, 180, long right two, into easy left, and right two late, then left three late over crest at the rocks, 100. However, Collins punctured and damaged the steering on stage two, dropping some 30 odd seconds, and he slipped to eighth in historics. Another Welsh crew are Daniel Jones and Gerwin Barry in their Ford Escort. They were just behind Collins in ninth place, 4.3 seconds off their fellow Welsh competitor. Todd Falvey had switched from competing in a Porsche to a Mark II Escort. and really enjoyed the drive, with son Peter calling the notes in the ex Ernest Kidney Mark II. The soft-spoken Barry Jones is another Welsh driver and a former Irish historic champion. He and co-driver Brian Quinlan found the opening loop very slippy and he'd be changing the tyre compound for the repeat loop if they were to move up from 13th overall. Johnny Greer is an Irish tarmac regular who, along with Kirsty Riddock, switched from their regular R5 to a Sierra for this event. They lay in 7th place after the opening two stages and slipped back to 12th after three, the first run over Cara Lake. Problems as well for the father and son crew, Joe and Richard Connolly, who broke a bolt in the alternator in their RS 1600. They were happy to be still going and were just inside the top 20 after three. 
long five right go nips so nips at the end keep going though 45 left it's only five go on to a six right go on push on against fast four right now to the dip fast four right to the dip to a 200 <laughs> long six left over bumps to fast three right down here well, he may be 75 years young now it was a good opener for Jimmy McRae, who passed the ailing car of Raymond Johnston through the gap. However, McRae had trouble of his own on stage two when he spun the heavy Vauxhall Firenze. Morris and Stephen Maskell hail from Limerick, competing in their Ford Escort, and they had inched their way into the top 30 on historic standings after three stages. 100, two right, 150, into square left. Commit to this now, push on here. Two right, push on, push on, push on, and score, let's go, let's go. 150, turn square left, fail on the inside. Press, jump. 80. One right, 60. Donald O'Connor is a local driver and navigator Anthony Roche from County Cork alongside found conditions very slippery on their opening three stages, but the Mark 1 was still going strong with five stages to run as they took us up the gap. Three left. 80 up the middle. Three right. And five left and six right. We're moving to the faster modified section now and the big crowds were at the top of Mall's Gap stage where people had come from far and wide to watch the action. And one name seemed to be on the lips of Manny. What brings you to Mall's Gap? Because um, it's one of the best stages in Ireland and I really like it. And who are you here to support? Uh, Craig Green. Do you love the rallying? Oh, I do, yeah. And who are you here to see? Um, Craig Green and 6R4. It's one of the best stages in, in Ireland. And what time were you here this morning? I was here at 7 o'clock. Out before the breakfast? Yeah, no breakfast yet. Which <laughs> is a fantastic stage to watch. So. And what time were you here at this morning? We were here about half seven. So we lift at 5 o'clock this morning. Really looking forward to Craig Green giving you a crack at it there and all the so we hope you enjoy the living room. Love the historic best rally around and best look to Craig Breen and Rob Duggan, the man himself in town and hopefully they give us good entertainment for the day. So down to the bottom of the gap and on double O duties Craig Breen and Paul Nagel. The pair weren't even competing in the event but nevertheless the big crowds were out in force to see the brute power of the Group B supercar, the iconic Metro 604. The in-car footage up the gap went viral around the world. It's now time to sit back and enjoy the ride. Privilege to be able to be able to drive the car this morning on an iconic stage of that. So um, I I loved it, enjoyed every second of it. It's 30 year old technology, and uh, yeah, even even getting used to the gearbox. I would have never driven with a H pattern box before, and I was missing gears and and, uh, and finding hard in that regard. But I, I love it. It's really really pure and raw, and it's what rallying is all about. With Breen through, it was time to get back to the action. And last year's modified winner Rob Duggan and co-driver Jer Conway struggled with tricking conditions on stage one. But they were happy to take over the lead on stage two. And that advantage stood at 5.3 seconds after three. Shark five left, into a five right, time four right, late. 30. Shark three left. And right, 40. Right, and left into three right, minus, don't cut. Into three left. And fast three right plus, don't cut, and flat four left, 50, clear shot three right plus, don't cut, 60, five right half, long tightens three right. Away then went the flying milkman, Donny Golds, Declan Gallagher in the rear wheel drive Toyota Starlet. Gallagher had a dramatic spin on the opening stage and was very lucky that a bank saved him. However, he got going again and reckoned that he'd have to go for a harder tyre on the second run over the second loop in his bid to catch Duggan.
Chris Armstrong and Chris Melly were very happy with their opening loop and were second for the first two stages. But they slipped to third of the modified battle intensified. 10.3 seconds off second place Gallagher. Best up to sharp five right. Into sharp five right over press. Two left, 40. Two left, the three right double tighten, sudden five left. Three right double tighten, sudden five left. And long five right, tightens late. The late, long four left over press, 40. Two right, 60. The two right, 60. Four left, minus half long. 120. Jonathan Pringle is a former national champion. He had a few moments on Mall's Gap, but was happier with Balak Bima and Cara Lake, and was up to fourth in modified. Surprisingly, perhaps, the quickest on Mall's Gap was Colin O'Donoghue, a local driver and winner of the juniors at the Rally of the Lakes in May in a Civic. He had borrowed his dad Kevin's BMW for the historic rally, but after that impressive opening test, he was beset by intermittent technical gremlins as he slipped to fifth after three stages. In sixth, Gary Kiernan and Ryan Moore, who'd pushed Rob Duggan close at last year's event, but wasn't going so well this year in the escort. Kiernan had work to do on the second loop and was over 30 seconds behind Duggan. One right over crest, 100. Down to hook two right at the bottom, 80. One right through the crest dip, 80. Must hook one right over crest, 120. Middle for crest dip, 40. To middle for long crest, 200. On down to stop one left over crest. Only 30 to a 4 8 don't cut. Seventh and modified after three, Endo O'Brien and John Butler. Kenny Pair, who declared themselves happy with their setup and more than happy to be in the modified top 10 after three stages. David Bogey from Scotland and navigator John Rowan, in a brand new Mark II for this event, had some niggly setup issues on the opening loop, but the former British rally champion was enjoying the stages and indeed the atmosphere. Martin McGee and Dennis O'Mahony were just inside the modified top 10, the Donegal driver going well. They were just 4.6 seconds behind Bogey after three stages. Carry three left, 60 again. Laid four left and shiny five right. We laid four left and shiny five right. One left. Into. Four left plus. Mid four left plus. 100. Rounding out the top 10 modifieds, Monaghan driver Raymond Conlon in the Toyota Corolla. So three stages down in this year's event. The top five in historics own Murphy, Mark Falvey, Neil Williams, Melvin Evans and Thomas Davies. In modified, Rob Duggan leads Declan Gallagher ahead of Chris Armstrong, Jonathan Pringle and Colin O'Donoghue in fifth. The calibre of the entries is incredible and it shows how popular this event still is. With world rally driver Craig Breen and rally legend Jimmy McRae on site, the atmosphere is electric here at the Rent Kill Initial Killarney Historic Rally. Join us for more action after the break. Welcome back to the 2018 Rentical Initial Killarney Historic Stages Rally as the crews prepare for their second run over the three stages Malls Gap, Ballock Bima and Carra Lake. And the historic leader heading into that second loop, County Cork's Owen Murphy, who led by 8.7 seconds after three in the Talbot Sunbeam Lotus. Yeah, we've had a great morning. Now we, uh, we had a good tyre choice this morning and uh, we had a few problems there with a brake caliper leaking and uh, an axle mount broke. But Hopefully it doesn't stay going for the day. Well, despite the brake caliper leaking, Murphy then reported no issues over the second set of stages and maintained his lead. After six, the former Irish historic champion had his lead trimmed slightly, though, to 7.3 seconds. Flat six left again, and five left. 60. Three right long, tightens at the opening. Five left. Three left. Three right nips. And two left. I mean, three right nips, two left. And your three right tightens. <coughs> three left, 40. It was a great battle at the front of the historics with Mark Falvey trading times with Murphy on the repeat loop. The gap stood at just over seven seconds with two stages to go. And it was all to play for over the double run over Kilcommon. The second loop was a good one as well for the Welshman Thomas Davies who climbed to third in the escort. 
but as he was over one and a half minutes off the lead, a place in the podium was perhaps now his aim. These stages are one of the best in Europe. Are you delighted to be here? Yes, it's lovely to be here. When you come over the top and you can see, you can see the gap, you can see the crowd, it's almost like you can sort of feel the atmosphere inside the car. Um, yeah, really glad to be back and uh, it's nice to do it. Neil Williams had dropped behind his compatriot Davis into fourth, 3.3 seconds behind. Third place was still all to play for. We pulled a bit back now on that uh, second run through Carroll Lake. Uh, we had a bit more of a commitment there. Uh, so yeah, all to, all to play for. Sadly though, this was the last we'd see of Melvin Evans, who retired not far into stage four, the second run over Miles Gap. Having been third at one point before dropping to eighth with a puncture, Phil Collins had a good loop to climb back up to fifth. And flat left, get well out for a very long left one, extra late, continues over 150, then slowing at the end, right three. I dropped a fair bit of time this morning, got a puncture, damaged the steering, so we dropped 30 seconds or so. And we're fighting our way back, and we're back up to fifth. So, but it's all going to be, there's about 10 seconds over five cars, you know. And it's great to be involved in the historic, and you see how well some of these guys are going. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, after the first few issues, the car is really nice to drive. And, um, yeah, I'm enjoying the day. Wagging his tail like a happy dog off the start line. London-based local man Ray Hilliard was really putting on a show in the aptly named Escort. The Hill Twister was doing its stuff. Campaigning in Citroen and Fiesta or Fives in the 2018 Forestry Rally Championship, Catherine McCourt had registered for the 2019 Historic Championship and was just outside the top ten. After a tentative start, Andy Johnston was beginning to make headway now in the Vauxhall Chevette. And he and James McSharry were 13th on the historic standings. England's Duncan Williams with co-driver Guy Weaver are regulars on the historic championship. They were 15th. Galway's Ray Cunningham, a former overall winner in Killarney, was this year contesting the 2019 championship and was leading the minis after six stages. Yeah, having a bit of fun, leading the minis by, not by a lot. Colin is pushing us very hard behind, so enjoying it though. Great fun, great fun. Colin, you're having a great battle with Ray out there. Yeah, yeah, we are, yeah. We're having a bit of a run, yeah. Good crack, yeah. Try and just keep her nice and clean and tidy. Get round. Two more to go. David and Nina Goose are a father and daughter crew over from England. They're regulars on the historic championship. 16th on the standings with two stages to go. Jimmy McRae was going well, but was concerned about a fluctuating engine temperature gauge in the Forenza as he bid to complete yet another historic rally in Killarney. Pat Looney is a local mechanic. He did a great drive at last year's event, but it wasn't going quite so well this year in the Mark I Escort. We had a slow time the first time, found it very slippery. My first time going up there, it was very slippery. But it's, we're still here in SME 18, yeah, we're still here. Alan, how are you finding the Irish roads here today? Very, very, very challenging, very slippery. It's supposed to be fun, it is fun, but it's, yeah, you've got to be, uh, you've got to be on your game today. And did you make any change to the service? Yeah, softer tyres on the front. Yeah, I was turning the steering wheel, nothing was happening. Yeah. And so to the modified section, as the cars lined up at the bottom of the gap, there was just 5.3 seconds between the top two and this one, and indeed over just 30 seconds separated the top six, it was that close. Rob, are you happy with how you're getting on out there? Yeah, happy enough. Just slow getting started. Very hard to get into tricky conditions. Um, everyone's pushing hard behind, so yeah, we need to keep the push on up here now and try and get a bit of time back. Declan, how are you getting on out there? I dead on now. We had a bit of a spin there in the first one, but uh, two good enough stages after that then, you know, so hopefully we can... We're happy enough to be this far anyway. We nearly threw it all away in here the last time. But before all of that, once again, the sights and sounds of the Metro 604 with Craig Breen and Paul Nagel. The car and crew were the centre of attention at service back in Killarney and many had stayed up in Malls Gap to see the car once again traverse the famous old stage. Sadly though, Breen was forced to retire on stage five, Bannock Bema, when the prop shaft broke after a jump. A 
sad end, but it was great to see it in action. Yeah, unfortunately, just on the, the second run of Balak Bima, uh, we've broken, I reckon it's a prop shaft or something in the transmission, so um, it's a pity we had a real, real nice run on the gap, I'm really getting into it and was enjoying this one as well, so, but uh, old cars and old technology and you have to be a bit gentle with them sometimes, so uh, maybe it's a lesson to be, lesson to be learned. Not such a good day either for our early leader Rob Duggan who retired with a blown engine on stage four. The sound of the escort going through the gap were the soundings of its death knell. As a result of Duggan's demise, Declan Gallagher took over the modified lead and had a controlled drive through the second loop. At the end of six stages, the Donegal driver has justified his long trip down from Donegal. He was 28.3 seconds ahead of the rest. Chris Armstrong was quickest on Moll's Gap second time around and was back up to second place. But it would be a big ass to reel in Gallagher on the final two stages. I think Declan's too far ahead of us at the minute. We're on a big push, but uh, he's just on a different pace. We're happy enough. There's a lot of people dropped out in the last loop, but if we get to the end, they will be happy. Jonathan Pringle was up to third after stage four, but his run came to an end on the next stage. Balak Beamer too, as he retired the Ford Escort. With Pringle out now, Gary Kiernan then took over third place. But he too bowed out of the event, this time in stage six, Cara Lake. Not a good event for the usually reliable Kiernan. And it was now turning out to be a rally of attrition in the modified. Scotland's David Bowie also retired. Mechanical trouble with the throttle, the cause of his demise. Edge towards the end of the stage there with a problem with the, the fly-by-wire motor that, that uh, failed. So basically we had no throttle. And between that and then the, it, it sticking on, it was uh, just a case of switching it off and preserving the engine and, and keeping the car on the road. With Manny ahead of him, falling by the wayside, and O'Brien was surprised to find himself up to third now. 46.5 seconds off the overall modified lead. We're having fun out there. We're just, just the last few stages now. It's just such a pleasure to drive. We're just coming off the stage with a smile on our face. So we're lucky we're tired. A good few of the rest are falling out. So yeah, no, we're really having fun. Martin McGee was also the beneficiary of retirements, and he was now up to fourth. But McGee had some moments of his own. Hit the four right. Forty. <laughs> well held, sir. Forty. You're the royal. Shiny tight five right. Push. Three left open to one left. Maybe don't push. Three left open to one left. 60. Turn five left plus. Three turn five left plus. End press. Five left on cut. 80. Two right over press. 60. Conan O'Donoghue and Eddie Doherty were still having some technical issues in the BMW. But it was quite the sight and indeed sound through the valleys of the kingdom as he was now fifth with two to run. It's a beautiful noise. Colin, how are you getting on out there? Not great. We had a lot of problems now all day today. The car keeps cutting out, but we had a good cut in the gap this morning. It was set faster, so we were happy with that. Next through the Waterford brothers, Richard and Brian Harney, really enjoying the stages and seventh in class. And a six left and a five left. Six and a five now, remember the five. Sixty. Carson close, three right and three right again over crest. Carson close, three right and three right again over crest. It is six left. Eighth, Jason Black and Carl Egan. Black, the national junior champion and Billy Coleman finalist for the Young Rally Driver of the Year. Black had some early mechanical issues, but was going well now in the start. Of. One left, 60, care, two left, black, two left over press. Don't cut, go out, and a caution, long two left, tightens to a three. 40, slippy four right. 80, keep right, for three left, don't cut. 
Patrick McHugh and Porek O'Donnell had made the long trip south from Donegal and the Northwest crew were up to ninth. John Devlin and John McCarthy switched from a top of Sunbeam to a Mark II Escort and they rounded out the top ten and modifieds with two to go. Our first look at Vincent O'Shea, the Kenmare driver with Cavan's Sean Bruton sitting in for the first time. They were 11th on the standings. The Limerick driver with his crowd-pleasing style is Stephen Bond and co-driver Chris O'Donnell. Her lay in 12th with two to run. Local father and son crew, Charlie and Johnny Hickey, in one of four rent-a-kill backed cars. Charlie is the most experienced driver in the rally, and Johnny is heavily involved in organising the event. Tommy McDonough and Paul Hickey are a Clare crew, the regulars in Killarney. Two left over crest, one under up the hill. And then we have a fast two right over crest jump, two right over crest jump, 80, right on crest, 100. We flew for the bumps here for a four right. Watch the bump here now for the four right slippy. Connor Murphy and Kieran Donahue, another local crew. Connor inherited this escort from his dad Ed and was putting it to good use on his home rally. Bob Morn and Ono Dunahu, another local crew, going well, reporting no issues. Lucky pair. Three right, into, three left, into, three right, don't cut, into, fast five left, up maybe, and flat crest, and one left, forte. And here's Thomas Randalls and Tony Healy. Winner of the inaugural Carlo Mark II Challenge back in 2004. Randall's out of retirement and enjoying his run. He hopes to return next year in a new escort. Six right, 80 up the middle. Up for that, come on. And a push three right, 130 to mark up to the gap. Third square left. Come on. Square left, though, nice and neat. 40 and a left over crest into six left. And the gravel. Six left, on course, 80. Saw the top five in historics after six stages, two to run. It is Owen Murphy who leads from Mark Falvey, but the gap is minimal. Thomas Davies in third, ahead of Neil Williams and Phil Collins in fifth place. Leading the modifieds is Declan Gallagher, Chris Armstrong in second, and O'Brien, Martin McGee and Colin O'Donoghue make up the top five. What an incredible event so far, and it's not over just yet. The crowds have turned out in their droves for the Rent Kill initial Killarney Historic Rally. Join us for more action after the break. Welcome back to part three of this year's Killarney Historic Stages Rally as we look forward to the final two stages, the back-to-back -back runs over Kilcommon, which is located to the north of Killarney, and things couldn't be tighter at the top of the historic section of this year's event, as going into the last two stages, just 7.3 seconds separated the Talbot sunbeam of leader Owen Murphy and the escort of Mark Falvey. It was going to be a battle royal to the finish between the pair. Yeah, it is very close. It's nip and tuck all, all day. There's only been a couple of seconds every stage, so we're pushing as hard as we possibly can, and uh, Mark is in the same boat. So down to the last two stages, and now we'll see. We'll have to have a good time first time out in it. Mark, a great battle between yourself and Owen. You're lining second again. Yeah, we're second again this year. Uh, it's a bit less this year, seven seconds. So we have two stages to go. It's three and a half seconds a stage. So <laughs> we'll see. Can we do it? 
As it had been all day, there were big crowds onto the stage at Kilcommon waiting to see how the battle between Murphy and Falvey would unfold. And we caught up with a wedding couple who delayed their ceremony for the rally. Now that's commitment. Paula and Liam, you moved your wedding to accommodate the rally today. We did. We moved it an hour back. <laughs> That's fantastic. Are you devastated you're missing it now? <laughs> <laughs> we are. We'd love to hear it. It's a pity we couldn't hear the vrooming outside during the mess. <laughs> Liam, how do you feel about missing the rally today? You're not too devastated. Oh, not too bad, no. <laughs> it's a little bit more costly, a wedding or a rally. Which one? I'd say the rally. <laughs> <laughs> We'll leave Paula and Liam to enjoy their celebrations as we turn to stage seven, the penultimate run of this year's event at Kilcommon. And Murphy gave himself a little breathing room as he extended his overall lead to 9.6 seconds. Now the Corkman done enough to win his first ever Killarney Historic Rally. He certainly wasn't holding back. One flat, two right, 200. Middle of a flat crest. With a 200 middle of a flat crest, 200. Flat crest again, and flat six right over finish, 200. Give it another flat six right, 200, well done. It was all now up to second place, Mark Falvey and James O'Brien. They had just under 10 seconds to make up now when they traversed the stage for the second time. It was all or nothing for Falvey as the last stage of this year's event loomed. Thomas Davies had managed to force his way up to third now with one to go in his escort, and he held that third place by 1.3 seconds. Slipping to fourth on the second last stage, Neil Williams in the escort. But he was still not out of that chase for third and would hope that his second run at Kilcommon would take him past Davies. A puncture early on for Phil Collins in the Opel Escona really would pay to any chance that Collins would have had. He was fifth, though, in historics as he approached the final stage. While the action was going on in the historics, there was no problem in the modifieds for Declan Gallagher and John McGrath. Such was their lead. They could probably have done the final stage in reverse and still won, despite the stall. Second, but still with work to do to hold on to that second place, and O'Brien and John Butler in the Mark II. They led the third place crew by just 7.1 seconds. Chris Armstrong was second after six stages, but he disappeared from our timing sheets in the penultimate stage, allowing O'Brien up to second. Turn shiny, square right minus. We turn shiny, square right minus. Martin McGee and Dennis O'Mahony and their escort were now third. If they pushed hard enough, they could really have a chance of snatching second in modifieds on the last stage. Colin O'Donoghue and Eddie Doherty were safely in fourth place in the modified in the BMW with one stage to go. As ever, there's a huge contingent of Kerry Crews and Killarney Motor Club men. Here's some highlights of the locals on their home rally. One of the top local men here today. I'm trying to get back in today. I wasn't out competing with a long time, so the pace has gone wild quick. How are you faring out at the moment? It's slippy, but it's getting used to it. This is Jason Farrell, the son of Clark of the Course, Martin Farrell, with Clina Murphy on the notes, carrying out safety duties in the Honda Civic. And Jason's father, Martin, was delighted at how the event was going this year. Miles Gap this morning, it was like... Uh, the old days, you know, it was like a lakes event in May, in December, you know, it was fabulous. The banners, the crews, with, with Rentical on board, they, they came on board again for another two years. We're gone with nine or ten months now with preparation. It's been unbelievable. Without my company of Rentical, it just wouldn't happen. We're delighted to be associated with it. We've actually signed up this year for a further three years, so 
it, that obviously augurs well for the future of the rally, hopefully. Uh, this year it's been an absolutely incredible event. Uh, the rally fraternity have come out in strength and uh, supported Killarney and District Motor Club. The guys that have put all the work into this, really, we're just the, the name behind the event. Uh, I, they are the guys that do all the hard work. The prize giving would be back at the Rally HQ at the Glen Eagle Hotel later in the evening. And this what was up for grabs as the crews battled it out for class honours. And so to the class honours as the fans waited for the conclusion of the final stage. Class 1 winners Kevin Flanagan and Vanessa Hamilton from Wicklow and Scotland respectively in the Austin Mini Cooper. Class 2 winners David Fleming and Kevin Doherty in their Austin Mini. Class 3 winners Tommy McDonough and Paul Hickey from County Clare in their Mark II. Class 4 honours went to Lloyd Hutchinson and Willie Fitzpatrick from County Wicklow and Leash respectively in their Cooper S. In Class 5, the National Junior Champion Jason Black and Carl Egan he finishes off a fine year with a class win in the Toyota Starlet. In Class 6, 5th were Leonard Downey and Mark Murphy, both from County Cork, in their Ford Escort Mark II. Fourth, Dave Slattery and Dennis Coffey from County Kerry in the Ford Escort. Slattery hadn't competed for seven years and he takes home the O'Reardon Trophy for the best Kerry crew. Third, John Devlin and John McCarthy in their Mark II Ford Escort. Second in Class 6, Richard and Brian Harney from County Waterford in their Mark II. The winners of the class, Raymond Conlon and Damien Fleming in the Toyota Corolla. And to the top three overall in the modified section. Third home, Martin McGee and Dennis O'Mahony in the Ford Escort. Second, eclipsing Martin McGee by just 7.1 seconds, and O'Brien and John Butler in their Mark II Ford Escort. But the runaway winner of the modified study goals, Declan Gallagher and John McCarthy in their rear wheel drive Toyota Starlet. Look, we really enjoyed the event, and you know, it's a pity we lost so many boys along the road, you know. But look, at you have to get to the end too. And fair play to John here for all his hard work, and uh, the boys at Parachain Motorsport like the car was faultless all day, and we really enjoyed it. Moving on now to the historic classes, and in Class K, fifth home, Brendan Macquarie and Niall Kelly from County Monaghan in their Porsche 911. Fourth, Joe and Richard Connolly from County Kilkenny via the USA for Joe. Ford Escort, RS 1600, their car of choice. <laughs> Third home, Guy Anderson and Steve Link, one of our English visitors in the Mitsubishi Galant. Sadly, Andy Johnston and James McSharry, who had been third, retired on the final stage in their Vauxhall Chevette. Second, Todd and Peter Falvey, the local crew, in their Ford Escort Mark II. And the trip was worthwhile for Jonathan Greer and Kirsty Riddock from County Down in Scotland, respectively, in their Ford Sierra, as they took class honours. In B2, third home was Kenneth Tracy and Brian Hutton from County Carlow in their Morris Mini. Second, Colin McDowell and Wendy Blackledge in the Austin Mini. And first home, the veteran Ray Cunningham and Kevin Keane from County Galway in their Morris Mini Cooper S. Class C1 winners, Tom O'Brien and Scott O'Brien from County Cork in their Austin Mini. C3, third home, Mike Simpson and Dale Gibbons in their Mark I Escort. Second home in Class C3, Pat Looney and John Falvey, the local crew doing well in their Mark I Ford Escort. First in that class, 
Morris and Stephen Maskell from County Limerick in their escort. Chris, again, OK. This is all go. Two right plus down here. 300 to bus stop. And the bus stop is tight. Bus stop now is tight. Left hand entry. 130 out of it. Through crest dip. 130 out of it through crest dip. Moving on to class C5. Second home, the legend that is, Jimmy McRae and co-driver Mikey Galvin in the Vauxhall Firenze. Jimmy, it's great to finish another historic rally. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. Uh, as I said before, you know, Killarney's just got an atmosphere where you don't you don't get this anywhere else. And even the pouring rain at the finish, there's still loads of people here, so it's been great. First home in C5, Thomas Davies and Shane Buckley in the Ford Escort. In D3, third home, Alan Watkins and Erla McCarthy in the Mark II Ford Escort. Second in that class, from the Isle of Man, Declan Jackson and his County Donegal co-driver, Sean Lafferty in their Ford Escort. The winner, Duncan Williams and Guy Weaver, English pair, in the Ford Escort. In D5, fifth in class, Barry Jones and Brian Quinlan from Wales and County Cork, respectively, in their Mark II. Fourth, Ray Hilliard and Connor Walsh in the Ford Escort RS 1600. Third, Dennis Cronin and Helen O'Sullivan from County Cork in their Mark II Ford Escort. Second, Cahan McCourt and Barry McNulty from Tyrone and County Fermanagh, respectively, in their Mark II Ford Escort. And first in class, and also finishing in fifth overall, Daniel Jones and Gerwin Barry from Wales in their Ford Escort. The E2 class winner, Les Alfrey and Keith Fellows, visiting from the UK. And to the overall in the historics, Phil Collins and Adrian DC had been third at one point, but sadly for them, they retired their Opel Ascona on the very last stage. Setting fastest time on the final stage, Neil Williams and Anthony O'Sullivan overhauled Thomas Davis and Shane Buckley to take third on the historic podium. And despite going nine seconds quicker than Murphy on the final stage, it wasn't enough for Mark Falvey and James O'Brien, who had to settle for the runner-up spot for the second year in a row. And to the victory ramp at the Glen Eagles in the rain, and Murphy celebrated the win by just 1.1 seconds. It couldn't have been much closer. Owen, what a great drive today. How's it feel to be a champion? Uh, it's brilliant. We, we've been training to win this for a couple of years now, and to, um, it was a fierce close finish at the end with only a second between us. But uh, delighted, it's the first time the Sunbeam won the, the rally as well, so it is fantastic. He did his best, but Falvey just couldn't close the gap on that final stage. It's got fairly close there towards the end, uh, 0.7, I think, of a second on our time cards, anyway. So. Next year again, we'll have to try and get the, the top spot. So the top five in historics. The winner, Owen Murphy and Anthony Nestor, just 1.1 seconds ahead of Mark Falvey and James O'Brien. Third, Neil Williams. Fourth, Thomas Davies. And Daniel Jones in fifth place. The Rentical Initial Killarney Historic Rally has proven once again why it is the most prestigious event for historic rally cars. The weather hasn't dampened the spirits and we've seen some outstanding performances from all of the drivers. From all of us here at the Glen Eagle Hotel and the On The Limit Sports team, thank you so much for watching. See you soon. Sadly, not long after the event, Morris Nagel, father of Paul Nagel, and who founded this rally some 22 years ago, passed away after a short illness. The Killarney and District Motor Club described the late Morris as a true rally supporter and legend who will be sadly missed by all. Our yeste go rev a anam.